Hello, we are GMS, Gilson's Murray Skeptic Structural Engineers, and thank you for the opportunity to present our cantilevered work platform at the Historic Crown Building at 735th Avenue. New York City sidewalks are integral components of the public realm. These connectors are places where people meet, gather, stroll, dine, and shop. At their best, New York sidewalks enhance the urban environment, making the city livable and beautiful. Often, however, this quality of life is compromised by the ubiquitous sidewalk shed, a temporary structure needed during construction and facade maintenance. Sheds spring up on streets year-round and are designed to keep New Yorkers safe and protected from the dangers of construction work. Although a necessity for safety, sidewalk sheds are a disruption to the city, its pedestrians, and retail stores. The typical sidewalk shed is erected from a combination of posts, beams, and diagonal braces clamped together with metal or timber planking as the deck. The sheds are complex and time-consuming to assemble, reduce the space on the sidewalk, disrupt the flow of pedestrians, cast dark shadows, and block the views of business signs and display windows. Innovative thinkers have begun to implement alternate designs that focus on making the bracing more uniform and improving lighting and signage. These efforts enhance the pedestrian and retail experience allowing for more visibility and attention drawn to storefronts. But these alternate designs, like typical sheds, remain subject to impact load from errant cars or trucks, which could affect their overall stability and are a major source of shed failures. Overall, the traditional sidewalk shed has become an unfortunate necessity New Yorkers have been forced to accept. You can find construction and sidewalk sheds all over. The NYC Department of Buildings tracks sidewalk shed permits and each day, between 300 to 350 miles of sheds are in place. Recently, however, there has been a shift in the industry. The historic Crown Building at 735th Avenue sits on the corner of 5th Avenue and 57th Street, a premier shopping district and destination for luxury shoppers from around the world. The Crown Building itself is known as one of the most high-end, expensive retail locations in the United States. Designed by Warren and Wetmore in 1921, the building stands 26 stories high and was originally configured as office and retail space. In 2019, the building began a renovation of the upper levels of the building, the fourth floor and up, converting the office spaces into a luxury hotel and condominium residences. The complex renovation project required a sidewalk shed to protect the pedestrians and retail spaces below. GMS was retained to perform structural services for this task. Due to the Crown Building's historic and luxurious reputation and high foot traffic, an innovative solution was needed to create a safe structure that would protect the sidewalk and people below the construction while maintaining the visibility of the first three levels of retail space. The result? A cantilevered work platform. GMS provided structural engineering and structural special inspections to create a cantilevered work platform which projects 21 feet beyond the building facade and protects the public on the heavily trafficked sidewalks, 47 feet below. This first-of-a-kind design, which required significant retrofit of the existing structure, offers a column-free alternative to traditional sidewalk sheds with three significant benefits. It improves the pedestrian experience by allowing unobstructed movement. It enhances the retail experience by ensuring the renovation work is completed without blocking the storefronts and it eliminates the potential for vehicular impact. Compared to the traditional sidewalk shed as viewed here, structural alterations occurred over two phases. Phase one began with the interior work. This included the reinforcement of the perimeter columns between the cellar and fifth floor and the installation of interior backspan girders, as well as the retrofit of the existing facade and installation of GFRC panels to cover the permanent end plates. The backspan and cantilever members are typically arranged in pairs, with the center line of the pair aligned with the existing column center line, and the weight per foot of each member ranges and tops out at nearly 200 PLF. By using pairs of backspan beams, beam depths remained shallow and the ceiling height was maintained. This also allowed the engineers to keep the moments of the cantilevers out of the weak axis of the column and go directly to the backspan beams. The shear reaction is supported by a welded seat at the flanges of the column. This solution required a rethinking of the spandrels. 
the pairs of backspans needed to pass through the same space where the spans were beams originally connected to the columns. GMS proposed shoring the masonry facade to install a yoke to support the spandrels, to cut them back from the column, then install the backspan beams with their end plates. The end plate connections are located within the finished facade, proud of the existing columns, but behind the GFRC panels. The reinforcement of the existing columns and backspan beams took place whenever the building was able to provide access to a particular retail location. Hence, the reinforcement of some locations occurred prior to the start of others. A992 grade 50 structural steel was typically utilized for the backspan and cantilever members with end plate connections to connect the two. The thickness of the grade 50 end plates varied up to a maximum of two inches and utilize one and a half inch diameter A490 bolts with zinc coating. During phase one, we worked with the structural steel iron workers on a mock-up to ensure that the phase two team would have adequate clearance for tools to torque the bolts. Phase two moved outside to the facade where the exterior steel cantilever members and working platform deck were erected over multiple nights. It is worth noting that sidewalk sheds are erected by a different union than structural iron workers. Shed erectors are accustomed to working with smaller member sizes, which can be hoisted by two workers, and clamps as connectors, not structural bolts. The design team held several informational sessions with the shed erectors to discuss crane logistics and to ensure compliance with requirements for bolt tightening criteria. The New York City Department of Buildings required structural special inspections through all stages of the construction. Not unreasonable, given this type of shed structure had never been built before. The building is an NYC landmark, so the work required review of the Landmarks Preservation Commission. At the atypical condition at the building corner, built up 20 inch deep box beams are used in lieu of the typical W-shaped paired members. The northernmost spandrel along 5th Avenue was replaced to accommodate the cantilever moment forces. Rather than cantilever twice from the same corner column, the design team offset the 5th Avenue cantilever supporting it and its backspan from the new spandrel. In this plan detail, you see the 20 inch box shaped cantilever extending to the right, to the north, from the building's corner column, the new spandrel backspan beam extending south from the column, and the offset cantilever box beam extending east down the page with its backspan frame to the new box girder spandrel. Cantilevering and constructing over many stages are not inherently efficient, but both are ingenious, creative solutions to meet the client's goals. As this work was performed in an existing building, several challenges were met along the way. Simple ideas like establishing the loading and deflection criteria for a cantilever platform took extra effort and review with DOB, the contractors who would build the platform, and those who would use it in the future. The platform is designed for a live load capacity of 300 PSF to accommodate material storage and supported scaffolds above. We considered the cantilever rotation at the end plate connections and the effect of that rotation on the scaffolds above as they extend upward. Design and construction within a 100-year-old building is always a challenge. At the Crown Building, the staging and planning due to the presence of retail tenants provided another challenge. Much of the phase one work was done at night due to noise and fire welding restrictions to accommodate stores open during the day. One final challenge was the erection of the platform itself, which was performed at night after stores had closed in the cold of January and February with severe penalties for late turnover. A cantilevered work platform could be easily incorporated into new construction like window washing and other maintenance systems. Since the system at 735th Avenue includes permanently installed backspan members with end plate connections at the facade and localized facade support steel, exterior cantilever members can be installed at a future date in the same manner as the current exterior installation. This system is a prototype for similar existing buildings and for incorporation into new building design. The solution is now being used by other engineers and the system now allowed by the NYC Building Code. Now completed, the cantilevered work platform allows for an enhanced experience for pedestrians, businesses, 
and all who walk along the clear sidewalk path beneath the platform. It provides more visibility and light, deterring crime, and is more secure from vandals. And it provides a safer environment for the construction team working above by eliminating the potential for vehicular crashes and the resultant shed failure. We would also like to thank our partners on this project for their hard work and collaboration. Thank you to AISC for considering GMS's cantilever work platform at 735th Avenue for this award. It was a challenging and exciting project and we are honored to present it today.